the Abbott and Costello program. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that chubby little chap who only this morning put his Cupid bow lips against Santa Claus's ear and whispered, Hey, Costello, Costello, what are you doing here tonight all dressed up like Santa Claus? Oh, I'm putting on a Christmas party tonight, Abbott. Yeah? For my little brother, Sebastian. I got the Santa Claus suit, a bag full of toys. I even got a sleigh. Now, how about the reindeer? The what? Uh, don't you have reindeer? Not in California, honey. Uh, <laughs> look, where, where are you going to have this party in your suite? My what? Your suite. You're cute, too. Uh, look, <laughs> talk sense. Christmas doesn't come until next Monday. Why are you having Sebastian's party tonight? I gotta have it tonight, Abbott. What do you mean? I simply gotta have it tonight. Why? Sebastian won't be home Monday. He's joining the Marines. The Marines? That's ridiculous. How could little Sebastian join the Marines? He's only five years old. He lied about his age. <laughs> what a party this is gonna be tonight. What a party. What do you mean? My whole family's gonna be there. We're gonna have an all-electric Christmas. An all-electric Christmas? Oh, electric Christmas. What do you mean by that? Well, now let me see. What page? Oh, yes. <laughs> I got it. All, and all electric... That all electric Christmas, what about it? Well, Sebastian is getting an electric train. Yes. My mother is going to get an electric washing machine. And my father is getting an electric razor. And what about your uncle, Artie Stebbins? He's getting the electric chair. <laughs> Look, uh, Costello, how about the tree? Did you buy a Christmas tree? I bought the biggest Christmas tree you ever saw, Abbott. That's right. I just got it to put it up in the living room. That's fine. Got a tree. Mm -hmm. It's six feet higher than the ceiling. Oh, it's a shame you have to cut the top off. That's the way I felt. So I cut a hole in the ceiling. Bad. You cut a hole in the ceiling of our living room? Yep. This will be the first year we ever had a Christmas tree in our bathroom. Well, I don't know what else. Well, all right, forget about it. Look, Costello, what kind of a tree did you get? Is it a fir tree? Yeah. It's one of those great big... What'd you say? I said it is a fir tree. Is it a fir tree? Yes. Yeah. Who ever heard of a tree made out of fur? Uh, I'm only asking it's you. It's made out of wood like any other tree. Of course. Is it, it a fir tree? Uh, don't. Listen, I'm, I'm a dope. Of course it's made out of wood, you dummy. I'm not talking about fur, F-U-R. The fur I mean has an eye in it. The fur you mean has an eye in it? Yes. Just one eye? Uh, certainly there's just one eye in fur. Oh, wait, that nice. A one-eyed fur. <laughs> what kind of animals do you run around with? Animals, animals. I'm trying to find out what kind of a Christmas tree you bought. Hey, look, what kind of bark did it have? What kind of bark? Yes, didn't you, didn't you notice the tree's bark? No, oh, I have my earmuffs on. <laughs> I couldn't hear a thing. No, 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 bark, bark, the tree's outside. The tree is outside? Certainly. What's it doing outside? No, I thought I put it inside hey, the house. Look. Did you put it out on oh, Costello, look, Costello. Now you bring that Christmas tree now, in the house. Here, Costello, please. The bark of a tree is the, the outer coat. Did the tree have a rough coat? No. Oh. But the girl that stole it to me had on a smooth sweater. Uh, will you listen to me, please? The bark is the coat on the trunk of a fir tree. Now the tree has a trunk. Well, of course. That's probably where he keeps his coat and furs. Look, look, <laughs> Costello, I'm going to... silly. I know, there's nothing silly about it. If you listen, I'm going to try to explain this to you. Look, all Christmas trees belong to the pine family. Oh, no, they don't. My Christmas tree belongs to me. Then Let the pine family get their own. No, 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 no. <laughs> Never mind the pine family. I'm talking about the pine tree. We get pitch from pine. We get what? Uh, didn't you ever get pitch from a pine tree? No, I never wrote a pine tree, but I got pitched off a horse once. No, no. <laughs> I'm talking about pitch. Pitch tar. Didn't you ever hear of pine tar? No, but I heard of a tree tar. Tree tar? Yeah. Clang, 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 went the tree tar. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you the fir tree is a species of pine. Now, you can tell the different kinds of pine trees by the shape of the cones. By the shape of the cones? Yes. Now, what shape are the cones? Well, the, see, you know the shape the cones are in. What, what are they? Well, Meyer Cone, he's short and fat like me, and Mrs. Cone is skinny like you. No, 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 look. Never mind that. I'm talking about the cones in your tree. You're talking about the cones in my tree? Yes. What would the cones be doing in my tree? Now... Look, I look, bought it from Abe yeah, Green. All right, never mind that. You bought it. Cones got nothing look, to do with it. Look, Costello, for the last time, you bought a Christmas tree, didn't you? Yeah. All right, now, well, a Christmas tree is an evergreen tree that belongs to the pine family. Now, it's a fir tree. It has a rough coat or bark. If you climb the tree, you'll find a bunch of cones, and they will be surrounded by long, sharp needles sticking in their limbs. Now, just a minute, Abbott. 
this time you have gone too far. Gone too far? That's what I said. What do you mean by that? I didn't mind it when you said that my tree belonged to the Pine family. I thought you were only slightly crazy when you said the tree barked and wore a fur coat and that keeps the coat in the trunk. But when you asked me to climb that tree and stick long, sharp needles into the limbs of my friend, the cone, not only have you impugned on my good name, but you have dragged me through the muck with Meyer and Mrs. Cone is not going to like it. Costello, let's get the house all ready for your party. Did you put the tinsel on the Christmas tree? No, I couldn't find any tinsel this year, Abbott. So I trimmed the tree with spaghetti, and boy, does it look beautiful. Oh, what's beautiful about trimming a tree with spaghetti? Every time I plug it in, the meatballs light up. <laughs> you talk sense, please. Costello, I, I hope you've taken care of the party. Oh, sure, I'm going to serve ham sandwiches with mustard oil. Mustard oil is for a cold. Well, this is cold ham. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, come in. Mr. Costello? Yeah. You ordered some wood for your fireplace. That's right. I'm here with a load. <laughs> uh, where do you want me to put it? <laughs> You'd better put it to bed. Uh, look, please, please, let's not waste any time. Just file the wood there in the corner. Now, come on, Costello. We better start putting the gifts around the tree. Uh, by the way, what kind of a present did you buy for Connie Haynes? Oh, uh, but I bought her the most beautiful corsage. That's well. Uh, no, no, not corsage. You mean corsage? Cor no, 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 no. You mean corsage. A G E is pronounced arch, as in corsage and garage. Where did you get the corsage? Oh, from the man who comes to collect the garbage. No. <laughs> This is going to be a fine party. I can see that. I... What? What in the world was that? It was me, Uncle Bud. Sebastian. What are you doing with that shotgun? It's a present for you, Uncle Bud. I was hanging it on a Christmas tree and it went off. Well, I hope you didn't break anything. Do you know that mahogany door that leads into your den? Yes. Well, it's a screen door now. <laughs> oh, come on, Sebastian. Run along. Say, I wonder where the, uh, the holly berries and the flowers are and all that I ordered. You ordered flowers? Yes. But... Well, now, wait a minute. Can you think of anything nicer than flowers on the table? Yeah, meat and potatoes. Oh. <laughs> wait a minute. That's probably the flowers. Come in. I am sugar and the flowers. I am dandy. So don't tell me you're a florist. Uh -huh, that's right. There's the big rose set to the little rose. Hiya, bud. <laughs> hey, Abbott, why did you bring this guy over for anyway? I don't want any flowers. The last time I smelled a anastasia bum, I got a big bump on my nose. Anastasia bum. Anastasia bum. Anastasia bum. That's nasturtiums. There's no bee in it. There was a bee in this one. <laughs> <laughs> that stings. <laughs> Look, uh, pay no attention to uh, Costello Kitzel. Uh, by the way, what kind of flowers have you got? Did you bring me any pansies? No, no, I'm sorry. When I went out in the garden this morning, I discovered my pansies were drooping. Well, why don't you wear suspenders? <laughs> Never mind that. What did you bring us, Kitzel? Well, I brought you some of those beautiful grass flowers. Grass flowers? Yeah, petunias. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, uh, how's about buying one of these beautiful holly wreaths? They come directly from the Catskill Mountains. Oh, what's so wonderful about that? Why, Costello, have you ever seen the Catskill Mountains? No, but I've seen the Catskill mice. I, oh, I don't know. <laughs> that was some joke, That's eh? <laughs> no time for joshing. Now, now, but... now, 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 gentlemen, for goodness sake, you're wasting my time, and time with me is money. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. I'd like to take a peep at your income. <laughs> What are you, an income thief? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a very busy man. Do you want to buy some flowers or don't you? Make up your mind, yes or maybe. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Let's see what Kitzel has in that box. Costello, <laughs> for goodness sake, watch where you're walking. You just stepped on my puppies. On your puppies what? <laughs> the plants you just broke are puppies. So what? I'll buy puppies some new ones and I'll buy some mummies, too. <laughs> I'll tell you, you ought to be a... Mommy, some too. You ought to be a... Eat away, it don't mean nothing. I don't care. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Come over here. Come over here. You know what's wrong with you, Lou? 
Here I get Kissel, a great florist, to come here and decorate your house for the Christmas party, and you deliberately insult him. Yes, that's right. Costello, if I wasn't a bigger man than you, I, I would punch you right in the nose. Well, it so happens that I'm bigger than you. Hmm, that's a better reason. <laughs> well, I bid you good night, gentlemen. And that's a fine way to talk to Kitzel. Don't you know that he's famous all over the world for his flowers? His flowers win prizes everywhere. They do? Oh, certainly. Why, next week he's going to exhibit at the Pasadena Flower Show. No. Yes. Kitzel is going to show his rhododendron. To everybody? Yes. <laughs> well, what do you know? <laughs> There isn't going to be any party. Now, uh, if you'll go to sleep like a good little boy, your brother Louie will tell you a nice bedtime story. Will you tell me the one about the farmer's daughter? What? I never heard of such a story. Get the character, my Uncle Buddy. No, 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 no. Costello, you've got to get this little boy to sleep. Why, why don't you sing him a lullaby? Okay, what? go ahead. I'll, I'll sing him something. Come here, Sebastian. And sit on my knee. I'm going to sing you a beautiful song about Christmas. Now listen to me. I'm a dreaming of a white Christmas. I wish I I had a hard day today. Just like that. <laughs> you know, Sebastian, I was a little boy like you. Uh, and I was a bad boy, too. Oh, I remember how my mother... My mother... Oh... to sleep. Yes, your brother Louie always gets sleepy after dinner. I wonder if we ought to pick him up and burp him. Shh. No, 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 no. Shh. Don't disturb him. He's dreaming. your clothes so muddy. Oh, Ma, I was trying to pull a worm out of the ground. What happened? The worm pulled first. <laughs> oh, I'll see who's at the door. You go wash your dirty face. Oh, why can't I just cover the dirt up with powder like you do? <laughs> Abbott boy and the Niles boy. Yes, we, we came over to stay with Louie tonight. Uh, Kenny Niles' is teacher's pet. <laughs> is your father riding a bird tonight, Kenny? Oh, Kenny's father riding a bird. Whatever gave you that idea? I heard his mother say he was out on a bat last night. <laughs> Shame on you, Louie. Mrs. Costell, I'm no stool pigeon, remember. But I'm a you, snitcher! You shut up. You shut your shut up. That's a dirty snitcher! And Louie came Knock over... Knock that off my shoulder! I will ask... I'm only kidding! I'll get around to you, Louie. Don't worry. I... Louie came over to my house and asked my mother to take off her shoes. Louie! Yes. Why did you ask Mrs. Abbott to take off her shoes? I heard you say she was getting crow's feet, and I wanted to see them. Oh. <laughs> and they never fly an inch. Oh. Now, you children, stop this arguing and get into bed immediately. And I don't want to hear another word out of you until morning. Now, good night. Hey, let's not go to sleep. Hey, let's wait up for Santa Claus. What do you say? Hey, hey, listen to those sleigh bells. You must be Santa Claus. Look, he's parking up there on the top of the roof. Hey, he drives like my old man. <laughs> Look, he's getting ready to slide down the chimney. <laughs> Who built that fire in there? <laughs> I did. I wanted to see you make a gnash of yourself. Uh <laughs> See, Santa Claus, I hope you brought us some nice presents. Only the boys who aren't listed in my big black book get presents. Louis Costello, I have a report I got from your school teacher. Wait a minute. Do you, do you have to read it now? Yes. It says here that you painted all the blackboards red, you oh. chopped off the legs of the chairs, you put a goat in the cloakroom, yeah, you yeah. filled the inkwells with glue, and you put frogs in all the lunch boxes. Yeah. <laughs> What do you say to that? None of us is perfect. 
I'll get back to you later, Louie. Now, Buddy Abbott, what do you want for Christmas? Well, Santa, my mother told me to ask you for a, a new slingshot. Well, here it is. But why does your mother want you to have a slingshot? So she can get her garters back. <laughs> you behave yourself, Louie. Yes, ma'am. What? Yes, sir. That's better. You gotta be one or the other. <laughs> now, Kenny Niles, it's your turn. Here's a beautiful present for you. Oh, goody, goody. That's just what I always wanted, a nice little tinker toy. That's a great present for you, Niles. A little tinker toy for a big tinker. <laughs> All right, Kenny, you and Buddy Abbott run along to bed. I've got something to say to this little Costello boy. All right, thanks, thanks for the, thanks for the present, Santa. Good night. Good, night. Good night. Now, Louis Costello, let's see what else I have written in my big black book. Every naughty thing you've done is in this book. If he ever turns to page eight, I'm cooked. <laughs> Aha! Page eight. He hit it right on the head. I see that a few years ago, you flirted with a little girl in school. Is that true? Uh-huh. Did you give her your class pin? What class pin? I was only two years old. I gave her the only pin I had. Well, let's let the whole thing drop. That's what happened. That settles it, Louis. I'm afraid there's nothing I can leave you for Christmas. Nothing? You mean... Just plain nothing? That's right, Louis. A great big nothing? Yes. Maybe someday, when you've learned to behave yourself, I may come back again. Good night. Nothing at all. Oh, I'm a bad boy. Nobody likes me anymore. Even Santa Claus can't even stand me. Those two snitches, Buddy Abbott and Ken Niles, they both got presents. But I got nothing. I'm, I'm going to write a note, and I'm going to run away from home. That's what I'm going to do. Dear Mom and Dad, when you read this, I will be a thousand miles away. And don't try to find me, because I'm not ever going to come back anymore. Maybe. Maybe when I'm old, about 10 or 11 years old. And then after I make a million dollars, everybody will be sorry that they were so mean to me, especially those two snitches, Abbott and that Niles. Listen, everybody, please don't forget to feed my little pet skunk twice a week. There's a clothespin hanging by his cage. <laughs> P.S. Mom, don't forget to let my turtle swim in a bathtub on Saturday nights. Please do this for me. Your loving son, Louis Costello. Hey, look, Sebastian. Your brother Louis is still sleeping. The poor guy, he went to sleep thinking that nobody was coming to his party. Yeah. Will he be surprised when he sees all the people? Come on in, everybody! Merry Christmas! Come on, Costello, wake up, wake up! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What? What's going on here? We're all here for your party, Lou. Honey, pain. Oh, I'm glad you came. I've been waiting all year for you to sit up. Oh boy, all year for you just to be Santa Claus for you. Come on, sit on my knee and I'll give you a big kiss. But Santa Claus wouldn't do a thing like that. That's the way they do it at the May Company. <laughs> Boy, am I glad to see all you people. I had a terrible dream. I had a terrible dream that nobody cared about me anymore. Yeah. I was dreaming of a sly Christmas. I thought my friends had passed me by. Why, you know, Costello. That you're one fellow. You are loved by both the kids and old folks Though you have whiskers on your jokes <laughs> May your life be merry and bright And may your Christmas Day be Help me, Ma!
And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Lou, Lou and I just want to wish everybody, everywhere, a very, very Merry Christmas. That's right, folks. And this year, hang a war bond on your Christmas tree so that our boys can hang a sock on Hitler's jaw. Good night, and a Merry Christmas, folks. Merry Christmas, everybody. Get well quick, Betty. Get well quick, Betty.